Dave, don't come out. Oh, hold on. Lynn's coming to the door right now. Hold on. All right. Well, it's live. <laughs> but we can wait a second. Lynn, go to fucking work. We have, we're starting now, so you got to go. Go quick. Okay. All right, we're good. I've seen her putting on makeup in her car this morning. He said he's seen you putting on makeup in your car this morning. We're live, by the way. We're good. Whatever you want to go. All right. Three. Put your fucking shirt down. Three. You're the only skinny guy I've ever seen a man. That's three. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't. Three, two, one. What's up, NFL fans? Welcome to another week of NFL chat brought to you by www.sports-kings.com. I'm Andy Flint. Today with me, I have Cody White. What's up, Cody? What's going on, guys? Follow me on Twitter at the WLater30. And also, we have Johnny Judd. Hey, Tom Brady, retire. <laughs> oh, here we go. The slander already. So, I, you know, real quick before we start the show... I don't know how many of you know this, but ESPN, if you play in a fractional league for fantasy football, that goes all the way to the hundredths in points instead of the tenths. So, like, if you tie, it's in the hundredths. I had a guy, the same guy tied two weeks in a row in this league I'm in, like, and it showed it tied by the tenths, but he lost, and we were like, why does he keep losing instead of tying? And then I realized by emailing ESPN that it goes to the hundredths. That's crazy. So you can lose by like a hundredth of a point. Anyways, anyways, in honor of John Judd, I digress. So <laughs> we – I keep doing that. I'm going to do that every week. We got a good show for you guys. Uh, four weeks of football in the books. And uh, let's let's jump right into the probably the biggest football topic of the week, which was that of Dennis Allen being fired by the Oakland Raiders. Uh, a couple of fun facts real quick. Allen uh, is 8-28 and 28 since 2012, uh, fired after an 0-4 start this season. The Raiders look to be, you know, one of the worst three or four teams, probably the worst three teams in the NFL right now. Uh, don't have a win. Actually, they might be the worst team in the NFL. He's going to be uh, replaced by Tony Sperano. Sperano used to be the signal caller for the Dolphins. 29-32 uh, and 32 record there between 2008 and 2011. He was fired in 2011 after week 14. The Dolphins were 4-9 and nine at that point. I think they had like 7-9 and nine seasons, the two seasons before that, and I think the season prior, like 2008, they won maybe like uh, 10 or 11 games. Dennis Allen, what do you think about this, Cody? Well, it's uh, it was coming. Everybody knew this was going to happen sooner or later. Uh, I got down here also that they haven't won a game in the last 10 games, the Raiders. And they've, in those 10 games, they've only scored 51 points. That's awful. In 10 games, they scored 51 yay. points. I mean, it was a given. He knew he was going to go. Um, it's, I don't think coaching change is going to help this year. They need a lot of personnel help, too. Uh, now I think D David Carr is a little hurt, too, a little bagged up, so that doesn't help them. McFadden is not playing still up to his ability. Uh, I think MJ, Maurice Doju is kind of half healthy, half not healthy, so... I don't think this is going to turn their season around. I probably could have waited until after the season. They could have fired him. You know, but I think it's pretty much for the fans saying, hey, we're trying to do something to make you guys feel better. So I guess that's kind of what it's for. I think I don't think it's going to help them at all this year. This just in. John Judd. I want, oh, to, talk yeah, to, you. No, I I want to I want to speak to you like they spoke to Allen when they fired him. Oh, hold on. Oh, I get oh. that. Hi. Hi. What, what do you What do you think about Dennis Allen being fired? Uh, well, I'm not a big fan of it actually. <laughs> oh, he hung up on me. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it. I, I think uh, it's insane to the fans. Yeah, we're trying, but they fire every coach they have after every 0-4 start for like the last 27 years. It's it's just not like it's not. It sucks being a Raiders fan. It's like, well, what are they going to do? Go out and get John Gruden again, which I read on Facebook, which was a trending topic. But I just, it's it's not the coaching staff's fault. It, they haven't put together a good team. And it's not his fault. He was actually a good coach if he put a team around him. So I, I blame ownership. He should fire himself. Yeah, I think they're almost in a situation where you have to fire Allen. But, yeah, you're you're right. I mean, you hit, you hit the nail on the head there. They're, who's going to win with this roster? 
and probably what's going to happen. I don't even. I'm not even sure who Oakland plays this week. I never looked, but uh, you probably are in a situation where Sperano going to come in and they'll win a game. You watch. I almost guarantee it. I remember back. I don't remember what year it was. We're getting a little off topic here. Well, I'm getting off topic with the NBA. Doc Rivers at one point was the the coach of the Orlando Magic. I'm an Orlando Magic fan. I think they started off like losing like 18 games or something crazy like that, or maybe they were like one in 18, and they fired Doc. The guy they replaced him with, I can't even remember his name at this point, and right away he won like a game, and everybody was like, "Oh my God, we're turning things around." No, no, no. <laughs> If your team's 0-4 in the NFL, there's a reason for it, and it's, I mean, maybe the coach, you know, maybe Allen wasn't doing a great job, but at the same time, like, there, there's more underlying issues here when you're when you're 0-4, and actually, the Raiders are going to do pretty well this week because they have a bye. Um, <laughs> it, it'll be the best they've done so far. So let's jump into the the next, you know, this is kind of our topic B here is the hot seat. Any other coaches you guys feel are in the hot seat? Let's let's go around and we'll pick one coach a piece and, and talk about how they're in the hot seat. John, we'll go to you first. Uh, I think Gus Bradley in Jacksonville is uh, he's gonna get the can here pretty soon, which breaks my heart because he used to be the Seattle defensive coordinator. He's actually a really great coach. That Jacksonville team just sucks. Their offseason moves aren't panning out. They got Chris Clemens and Red Bryant from Seattle, and that I mean they should have a defense, but they don't. In every game this in this season, they haven't even been close. 34-17, 41-10, 44-17, 33-14. These games aren't defensive battles. I understand their offense sucks, but their defense should be way better. And they're not going to get any better either because their next slate of games is the Steelers, Titans, Browns, Miami, Cincinnati, Dallas. This They could easily be 1-9 and nine or 0-10 and going into their bye. And it's uh, it's it breaks my heart because I'm a big Gus Bradley guy. Maybe he could come back to Seattle and be our defensive coordinator again. Yeah, and you know the Jaguars are very similar to the Raiders. I feel like as organizations go at this point. I mean, obviously, I'm gonna have Raiders fans being like, "Well, we used to win in the '70s," and you know, Jacksonville unfortunately has never been that good. But yeah, I mean. I think if you're the coach of the Jaguars or the Raiders or teams like that, you're always kind of on the verge of maybe losing your job. But actually, that might kind of play in his favor a little bit too because I think with the Raiders, the difference is is like their staff still believes we should be winning games because we're the Oakland Raiders, and I know their fans feel that way. So it puts the coach in a, in a stickier situation. As we're at Jacksonville, I don't feel like the expectations are that high. It's not like they even have a fan base down there. Cody, who's your coach on the hot seat? Oh, I'm going to go with uh, Buffalo Bills' Doug Marone. Um, not so much I think he's going to get fired, but – because of the new ownership and the uh, now with the whole with our next topic benching EJ, I mean there's a lot going on right now in Buffalo. It's supposed to be a big, a big change going on. Um, and I think he's gotta he's gotta make wins happen. They have the, the difference between Buffalo and Jacksonville is Buffalo has the personnel in place. They have a good defense. Sure. They have you know two dynamic running backs. They have a you know number one or a number, first round receiver. You know then they got Mike Williams for Tampa Bay receiving. He's you know top last year was a top ten receiver I guess. So I think it's not so much that they don't have the personnel there. I think it's a lot on uh, Doug Doug Marone's shoulders. And actually, I think he needs to either get rid of the offensive coordinator Hackett because that might he might get himself fired for that alone, just having him play calling. So not so much personnel wise in Buffalo as it is coaching wise with new ownership. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how uh, if, if the Bills don't if they do go the two and fourteen. John John was predicting. I don't think Marone lasts until next year. And to be fair, I said eight and eight last week when I bought or sold them. <laughs> well, to me, you say two and fourteen. So, so you know, I and I think the the Marone one's an interesting one. It's not even really one I thought about. Um, but yeah, you could be right. You're a Bills guy. I mean, you you know more about the Bills than I do. I'm uh, I went with Tampa Bay and Lovey Smith. I feel like one in three. Um, you know, they play in a tough division. I I feel like you know you, you look at that if you're the general manager or the owner, that the Falcons, the Panthers, and the Saints coming into the season, the expectations were pretty high for probably all three of those teams. Uh, the division's really not shaken out to be as good as we all kind of thought it was. But, yeah, I think one in three, Tampa Bay, Lovey Smith, it's got to be feeling it because I think of all these new newer coaches here that have come in in the last year or even two years, Lovey Smith has high expectations because he did do a pretty good job in Chicago – I think probably a lot of that was to do with how good Chicago's defense was when he was there. 
Um, and, you know, their offense wasn't half bad. But 81-63 and 63 with the Bears, they went to the playoffs, things of that nature. So I feel like it's his, the expectations are high with him, and he's just not meeting it. Uh, this whole McCown-Glennon thing is crazy to me. I don't know how you can keep starting Josh McCown. He's not even going to commit to Glennon now after, he, you know, he came in and, and did great things last week. So I don't know. Either of you two have thoughts on, on Lovey Smith or anything of that nature. I think Lovey Smith's uh, track record keeps him there. That alone is going to make him stay, you know, at least another year, just because of what he has done in the past with the Bears. So it's actually funny. Well, I, I do have his track record written down here. Like I have a topic that literally says track record, and then next to it it says terrible with offense. Well, that's true, but so I, I think you're right. The playoffs. track record of wins is good, yeah. but like he's like one of those guys where you're like, yeah, he can be a decent coach, but don't let him touch the offense. Kind of all like Jim Schwartz or something. Jim like Schwartz. That. I was just gonna say that. that was yeah, yeah. Don't let him near the offense. <laughs> John, you had I, you were saying something. Sorry. Oh no, I was. I agree with Cody. I I, I just think because his name, Lovey Smith, and I think ownership understands that it's a probably a couple of year process. I think he sticks around because he's a great coach, and I think uh, I think that organization understands that. Actually, that's a, that's the big difference. I think that's where Cody might gain the advantage with the Marone thing here. Is I think that, you know, maybe in Jacksonville and in Tampa Bay, they understand that it might be a process. It might be a year or two. The Bills, I think that they thought they could make playoffs this year. Maybe they, they still can, but yeah, they, they have to win games. So Cody, I I think you you know you have a good point there. Initially, I didn't think it was, but initially I was over here going, this guy sucks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyway, let's let's jump into something Cody kind of was touching on a little bit there. That was uh, the Buffalo Bills, and they've decided to bench Eli Manning in uh, nope EJ in Manuel in, or EJ Manuel <laughs> in lieu of I want to party like Kyle Orton. Since that's yeah, Cody's buddy. hashtag, we'll start with you. You're the Bills guy. Kyle Orton's going to step in uh, week five uh, against a good Lions defense too, and it's on the road. What do you think about this whole move overall? Uh, well, I, I've been very critical about EJ and his accuracy and his QB decision making since he's been with the Bills since last year. Um, he's got sp spots where he shines real big and he looks great, like he could be, you know, the next Russell Wilson type quarterback. But he's got the other seventy percent of the time where he looks like garbage and he's not accurate. Do I think this is the right move? Absolutely not. I think this is going to ruin a young quarterback's career. Um, he has to have time to develop. I know that. I can call for his head all I want to. Kyle Orton is not – if Peyton Manning was coming in for E.J. Manuel, okay, I'd be okay with that, but not Kyle Orton. Kyle Orton's proven that he's not really a, a guy that could be the guy. Yeah, he's won a few games here and there. He's but not he's, a guy. He's not the guy is what I mean. He's not, <laughs> he's not the guy to win you games. If, if he's got to come in and play two or three games for injury, an injured quarterback, he can you know keep you in the games, let you def help your defense out. But he, I don't think he can be the, a starter for a full season and, and make a playoff team. So – this is why Doug Marone, to me, is on the hot seat because you can't take a quarterback you drafted in the first round last year, say last year, and maybe this year, that your full faith is in E.J. Manuel, and then at week after week four, you bench him. I think that's a, I think it's a bad move on Doug's part. I think it's going to ruin E.J.'s confidence in his career as like a leader. John, your uh, your thoughts on the switcheroo here of E. Uh, I almost said it again, Eli Manning. I have him on the brain for some reason. Maybe it's because he torched me in fantasy this week. Your thoughts on E.J. Manuel being replaced uh, by Kyle Orton for the Buffalo Bills? By the way, just real quick. Yeah, Eli was available in my league, and I passed him. I was like, nope, I'm going uh, I'm going to Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> of course, of course you passed on him. He's been bad. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm just thinking, I'm sitting here trying to think, like, if I was in the front office, and you were going to bench EJ after four games, why would you get rid of Thad Lewis and fuck their tool time? <laughs> I, I think I think those are two better quarterback options. We, than... Jeff Tool's still on the practice squad, by the way. No, oh, is he? I thought, he, uh, I thought you guys cut him completely. But, I don't know, I think those two were better options than Kyle Orton. I do think that a switch needed to be made. I think the reason they lost that game probably last week was the play calling at the end there. But I mean, EJ didn't help himself at all because he's not accurate. He's I mean, he's not a good quarterback. I don't think I don't think develop, developing him will make him a better quarterback. I just think he's just not in a full caliber. I think he's a solid backup, but unfortunately, you got two solid backups, and you're gonna just play one or the other, and hopefully it'll work out. Luckily, that division's still winnable. I mean, you're tied for first with two and, by being two and two, so eight and eight could theoretically win that division. So, I mean, maybe Kyle Orton just comes in here and just knocks your socks off and throws for 50 touchdowns. 
You never know. Stranger things have happened. I know the Seahawks won a title. Uh oh. Did we lose Andy oh. here? We got double and Andy time. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Proceed on. Where are we at? We're still it's on you for EJ. John just finished up his EJ talk. All right. EJ Manuel, you know, being uh have starting four games. I thought the only game that he really looked like terrible in was was this last week against the Texans. I thought, you know, you could find some things wrong with his game in the previous three weeks, I, I you know, suppose, but it wasn't that bad. I don't think it was lose your starting job bad. Kyle Orton, a couple of really quick facts about Kyle Orton that kind of wowed me this morning. I wasn't ready to see that Kyle Orton has like 15,000 passing yards in his career. Um, his uh, TD to interception ratio is 83 to 59 in favor of touchdowns. Uh, it was crazy, but Orton kind of had the same fate EJ's having right now in Denver when he was replaced by Tim Tebow, I think, in 2011 or something of that nature. Yeah, 2011. After five games, the billboards were raised in Denver, and everybody wanted te uh, Tebow time in there, and he came in, won a playoff game. Now he's somewhere else. At ESPN? Not playing football is, <laughs> is really <laughs> the key. You thought what? I thought he's at uh, Good Morning America now. I oh, think yeah. he is, actually. I think that's that right. just happened, didn't it? Yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm a little discombobulated getting booted out here. My internet's a real treat this morning. Anyways, I think we can jump into the next part of this topic, and that's Geno Smith. Is is Geno Smith the young Jets quarterback next? John, we'll go to you first. Uh, I think he should be. I think Michael Vick's the better quarterback right now. But, uh... No, I, th I think he sticks around. I think they, they, they it's live or die by uh, Gino there in New York. I think if you're going to bench him, though, not, it's not because of the way he's played. I think uh, you bench him because he cussed out some uh, fans there after the game last week, and I think that's why you get rid of him. But, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think Rex Ryan gets rid of Gino. Cody, your thoughts on Gino? I think uh, Gino gets benched, definitely. Um, I said at the beginning of the year that he would get benched. And the best thing for the Jets is that their backup is Michael Vick. And we all know how dynamic he still is as a player. I mean, it's going to be a lot better for him to come in and drop back instead of what he's doing now, coming in, direct snapping and getting to a two-yard run every once every four or five game or once every four or five drives. So um, I think their better option is Michael Vick. I think a veteran quarterback on that team with uh, a pretty good defense, I think, helps him out when he wins some games. I don't want to see it because they're in my division, but – yeah, I honestly, I think that Michael Vick's a better option at this point right now. I think Geno still can be, like, their coach of the future. Um, you know, I, I did have some, some crazy stats written down here about Geno. It was, uh, he has he has five touchdowns, five interceptions, and he's fumbled four times. Now, not to say they lost all four fumbles, but four fumbles is a lot. I mean, you're talking at nine potential turnover opportunities to five touchdowns. I think that's a big issue. But I, I really think it's the, the Jets' offense is kind of an issue as a whole. They don't run the ball well. We talked about this last week. They, they, they run really weird schemes. But I think with Vic, the thing you're looking at is the same thing we can talk about uh, with Tebow a few years ago. The, the fans were already chanting for Vic last week uh, when they were losing to the Lions in New York. So that's going to play into this huge. I mean, a lot of, it's in, in a city like New York, like you have to please your fans. So I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like it's the the pressure's on, and we'll see what what happens with Geno next. I mean, he's at least going to play another week. Who do they play this week? Anybody have any idea? Oh uh, uh, yeah, Colts. I think no. It's the no. Oh, Jesus, my page is going nuts. My internet is really bad this morning, guys. I'm sorry. Bear with me. They are playing. If only I could read. They're playing the Chargers in San Diego too. So yeah. this yeah, this could really be the week where you know Rex Ryan's had enough, the fans have had enough, and, and we might see Michael Vick next time. Well, Anybody well, have any closing thoughts, John? Yeah, my thing is uh if when he had Tim Tebow and the fans were chanting for Tebow, Rex Ryan didn't bend for that. So I mean I understand that yeah, but my, Michael Vick's Michael a way, better, way better quarterback. Way better than He's pro he's he's way more proven than Tebow. Tebow won one playoff wow. game before coming to New York. That was it. Michael Vick is what do you have came and except for getting hurt, he's been a really dynamic quarterback when he's in the league and not in jail. The other so, end of that yeah, coin yeah. though too is is that is two two facts about that situation. 
A, Tebow, I don't think was brought in to ever be a threat to, to start a quarterback. He was brought in more to play those exotic wild uh, wildcat schemes and things of that nature. And two, Mark Sanchez was kind of established. I know he, his stat line was never nuts, but he took that team to the playoffs like two times. So that's a little bit different than Geno. Like Sanchez had actually done things for the job. I don't. The fans didn't turn on him as quick as they turned on Geno. Is is kind of the the thing to me, the pulse of this whole situation. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into the next topic. Uh, last week we we went with the buy sell uh, teams to to be. Well, we didn't really solidify them as playoff teams, but we, we did a buy sell on some of these young or these up and coming teams. You know, the Lions, we talked about the Bills, obviously they were two and one then and not two and two. We talked about the Cardinals. Now we're gonna talk about teams uh, buy or sell these teams not making the playoffs. So here we're dealing with teams who you generally expect to make the playoffs or had high expectations coming into the year. And now we got to talk about whether their chances of making the playoffs could be at risk. And we'll start with uh, Cody White's favorite team, the New England Patriots. Cody, you can go first. Buy or sell the Patriots not making the playoffs? I'm selling. They're going to the playoffs. They're in a weak division. Miami's not playing up to their their what they should be playing at. The Jets we just talked about with Geno Smith. The Bills we just talked about with EJ Manuel. There's too much going on in that division for the Patriots not to win it. And simply, as bad as he was last week, it's Tom Brady and it's Bill Belichick. They're going to the playoffs. John Judd. I am buying them not making the playoffs, or am I okay. selling? Wait, now I'm confused. Are you buying or selling them not making the playoffs? Okay, yeah, so no, if I'm you buy, buying. then you think they're not making the playoffs. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, good, good. All right, so, yeah, I'm buying them not making the playoffs. Uh, I just don't think that Tom's getting the, the job done. He ranks 24th in overall QBR. Uh, he only has a 59% completion percentage. He doesn't have any stud-wide receivers. They've what, only dressed like three uh, natural wide receivers this week. A fellow uh, Rob, element, yeah. Rob Gronk does have three touchdowns. He only has 13 catches in four games. Uh, Tell me about they it. Have no, they have no running backs that have 20-yard carries at all, like not even like 20 actual yards or more. They have no – nobody's rushed for 19. So <laughs> I don't think that – I don't think they make the playoffs. Their defense has kept them in the game. They're tied for second in turnovers. But no, I just I don't think it. I think the Jets or the Bills make that that playoff push for that division. I think the time is over for the Patriots. Retire, Tom. You suck. <laughs> I want to shout out the Patriots defense. That's kind of been their glue, as John was saying, holding them together thus far and getting me negative points in my fantasy football leagues this week. You guys are awesome. I am going to sell, and here's why. John, I agree with everything you just said, but eight games is going to win that division. Eight and eight. Who, who's getting to eight and eight? I don't. I don't think Miami's getting to eight and eight. Um, I, I don't think the Jets are getting. The Jets to me were the threat at first to to maybe win eight or nine games, but I don't think it's going to happen. There's there's just too much going on there, and the Bills. I, I don't know. I, I had I honestly had them winning seven and nine games before or going seven and nine before the season started. Um, <laughs> last week when we spoke about them, I said maybe they'll win eight and eight. So maybe they can or maybe they'll go eight and eight. Maybe they can win eight games, but I really do feel like New England I think if New England's close to any other team in that division towards the end and they really need they both both teams need to really win a game, I think I'm gonna put my money on New England. So I think it'll be close in that division, but I think, you know, Eight nine games wins that division, and I think it's it's going to be New England. Um, the next next one we have is the the Green Bay Packers, another uh, you know story franchise, the team that generally speaking wins their division. Are you uh, going to buy or sell them not making the playoffs, Cody? I'm selling that. I think they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, they're starting to come around. Obviously, they were a little weak here. The first few weeks of the season, but you can see the old Aaron Rodgers coming out. Him and Jordy Nelson, you know, Randall Cobb had a big week this week. A. Lacey's finally come, bounced back and had a good week. Um, I got to I gotta say they're making the playoffs. John, buy or sell the Packers making the playoffs? I or am, not making the playoffs? I'm selling that. <laughs> you really can't get the hang of this. No, I can't. I think sell sell the means you believe they're going to. I do. I believe they're going to make the playoffs. So you're uh, selling. Like selling. Yeah, whatever. Jesus. I said last week. No, whatever. You week. do it right. Oh, my God. Gosh. I love you. 
I love, I love you both. All right, go ahead. Okay. I think the Packers do make the playoffs. I said last week, I think this week against the Bears was the week that they turned it around, and they did. Uh, Rodgers threw for four touchdowns, 302 yards. He had two 100-yard wide receivers. Lacey, while he wasn't great, he only rushed for 40 yards, but he got a touchdown, so he was a threat. Uh, their defense got two touchdowns and forced three four, or, uh, forced three fumbles. Even though they didn't recover the fumbles, they still forced them, so they're hitting the quarterback. And I just think, I mean, if you can consistently do that, which they're capable of doing, that's easily a winnable division, and they win games when you play like that. It's easy. So two sells for the Packers missing out on the playoffs. I'm going to make it three. I sell this notion, too. And it's almost a thing like New England. I mean, I think the, the NFC North is much better of a division. But at the same time, I just I almost don't trust the division because you have the you have the Chicago Bears who are Jekyll and Hyde. They, they're all over the, the globe with what they can do. I mean, one week they look really good. The next week they look awful. And then you have the Lions who kind of are in control of this division at this point at 3-1. and one. And, I mean, we saw this last year. The Lions were like 6-3. and three. Aaron Rodgers was out for six weeks. Cutler was out for four weeks. All the Lions had to do was win three games, and they go like 1-7 or something crazy like that, and they just completely blow the division. And I don't trust Minnesota. So, yeah, I'm going to say that I do think the Packers are making the playoffs. I sell them not making the playoffs. I think even if they don't win the division, say the Lions win the division, I, I still think they're going to win – you know, 10 games and, and grab a wild card. Our third buy sell is the Chicago Bears. We just kind of talked about them a little with the with the Green Bay chatter. Bears had high expectations coming into the season. Do you buy or sell them missing the playoffs? John, we'll go to you first. I'm buying that they missed the playoffs. They're 0-2 at home, which is they used to have a great home field advantage out there in Chicago. Uh, they're ranked 16th in total yards, 13th in points, and 18th in rushing yards. Uh they're, I mean, they have a, a pedestrian offense. Uh, their defense is 24th in points given up, 24th in yards, and 12th in sacks. So, I mean, it's an easy equation. An eh offense and a bad defense, no playoffs. Cody, buy or sell the Bears not making the playoffs? I am buying them not making the playoffs, and it's what we just talked about, what you just said. Uh, Detroit's going to win that division, um, and then the Packers get the wild card, so it leaves no place for the Bears really to be, I think, uh, they are just so hit and miss. One one game they look like, you know, a great, going to make a great playoff run deep, and then the next game it looks like crap. And John said it too. Zero and two at home, you can't be you can't be that bad at home and expect to make the playoffs. So, I am buying them missing the playoffs. And the the speaking of the home, the, I remember the the stat was what was it, week one that the Bills had never won in Chicago. Never, ever in the and history. Then, and then they won in Chicago. Yeah, Soldier Field is not safe, and you're playing in a division where teams can light you up. The, the thing that kills me the most about Chicago, who I'm also buying them not making the playoffs, is that Jekyll and Hyde teams, to me, are the worst. Like, when your team's completely bipolar from one week to the next, I have like I can't trust you. If you're the Jacksonville Jaguars and you're going to Seattle to play the Seahawks, I know you're going to lose. But if you're Chicago, it's like... You can go. You could travel to to Seattle, and you could win by two touchdowns. And then the very next week, you could go to Jacksonville and lose by two touchdowns. And like, I'll, I'll never understand that. And those teams scare the hell out of me. No, I'm just kidding. I just say whatever I want. I'm going with uh, I'm going with the buy on them not making the playoffs. I just I don't see it for Jay Cutler in the in the Bears this week. And John was talking about the stats. They have the 22nd overall ranked defense and the 20th overall ranked offense. That. It's not, it's not getting you to the playoffs. Next team are the New Orleans Saints, another team that had really high expectations coming into the season. I think everybody expected them to win their division. Um, people talked about Carolina taking a step back. The Falcons had a disastrous season last year. John, we'll go to you first. Are you buying or selling the New Orleans Saints not making the playoffs? I am buying them not making the playoffs. Which oh, I got I it. Can't... All right. Go ahead, John. Look at him, he's disappointed. Which is flabbergasting to me that I'm, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe that they're that bad. They're so, they're always, they're perennially good, you know, and they're just not this season. They have the 30th ranked defense. Uh, they have, they're 15th in points per game. They're third in passing yards, but they don't really have a decent running game. Uh, they've turned the ball over six times in four games, and they have a horribly tough schedule. I just don't. I don't see it. 
I, I think maybe seven and nine, eight and eight, but I think the Falcons probably win that division, and I don't think a wild card comes out of that division. Cody, buy or sell the Saints making the playoffs? Not I also, I'm also buying that they're not making the playoffs. Uh, it's simply defense wins games, and they don't have defense at all. And it was just crazy because they're supposed to have coming to the season this amazing defense. Their defense is just awful. Um, I have the Falcons also winning that division, but I have Carolina coming out of it with a wild card. So I don't think they have a chance. I think they they might go, I don't even know, six six and nine. Six and, it's tough, six it's and tough to think that they would go six I know, and it's hard to say that, but I mean, they're, they're, like John said, the schedule stuff, and they've been playing. Their defense plays like crap. There is no defense there. No, no. Well, I'm not saying it's tough to believe now. Like I, I totally believe it, and I am also buying the notion that they will not make the playoffs. <laughs> I, I just, but going coming into the season, if you would have told me that, I would have laughed at you. I would, you know, I would have oh, yeah. laughed you out of the room, and I would have been like, "What are you talking about? They're going to win the division." Um, yeah, I don't know. And to me, this is almost one of those things where it kind of is reminding me of what I was saying about the uh, the AFC East, in the sense that like eight, <laughs> eight or nine games might win this division. Just because none of these teams look that good, Carolina, I don't know. I guess Carolina looks about as people thought they would, because I know a lot of people were talking about them taking a step back, no wide receiving core, stuff, stuff of that nature. And you know, the Falcons are still the Falcons are almost one of those Jekyll and Hyde teams. Like they have a high-powered offense, but they yeah they can go out there and, and just drop an egg. Uh, the Saints, on the other hand, I think they're in trouble, and I think Cody saying six games, maybe even seven games, maybe five games, like they. They're really running the risk of, of doing something crazy like that. As long as Drew Brees and Jimmy Graham continue to connect on the field, I'm cool, man. So <laughs> let's jump let's jump into the next one, which is the San Francisco 49ers, another team that I would just label as Jekyll and Hyde. John, buy or sell the 49ers not making the playoffs? Is that a real question? <laughs> that is a real question. They are not making the playoffs because they suck. No. Tell us how you really feel. I don't think they make the playoffs because, I mean, that's Seattle's division to win, in my opinion. Not saying that as a fan, but, I mean, realistically, they're the best team in that division, I think. And then the emergence of the Arizona Cardinals, I don't think there's room for them to make the playoffs. They've taken a step back. They have horribly a, a horrible amount of injuries. And uh, so I'm buying that they do not make the playoffs because they're an awful, awful team, and they just need to disband. <laughs> So as you can all see, John Judd really loves the San Francisco 49ers. Cody, buy or sell the San Francisco 49ers not making the playoffs? I'm also buying they're not making the playoffs. They are going to be my Arizona Cardinals of last year and go 10-6 and six and not make the playoffs. Um, I think Seattle obviously wins that division. They, they, they have to. It's just Seattle, whatever. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. But I think the Cardinals actually give them a good run for their money this year. And uh, I think the Cardinals and Niners flip-flop from last year. So... No Niners, no Niners in the playoffs, Cardinals to the playoffs. I'm buying, too, and I think it's uh, – San Fran is hard to put my thumb on. I don't really – they're another one of those teams. I don't know what I'm going to get from them week to week, and Arizona and Seattle are both too good at this point. And John talked about the, you know, the emergence of the Arizona Cardinals, which is absolutely true, but it's like they're – it's not like their emergence is this season. Like they kind of have built a history now because last year they did so well winning 10 games. And I, I don't know that San Fran will win 10 games. I, th I just think that both Seattle and Arizona will. I think maybe San Fran's more of an 8-8, eight 9-7 eight, team, um, you know, going to miss the playoffs. So I buy that. Uh, that was our last one. Let's jump right into our Bounce Back Fantasy Player of the Week. We've done this uh, a couple weeks now. This is where we each go around the table and we pick – one fantasy player, generally speaking, a good player, a guy you would have drafted in the first few rounds, who's had you know a bad week last week or a bad season or a bad couple of weeks strung together, and you think he's just going to really come back, you know, buckle down and, and get you some fantasy points this week. We'll go to you first, Cody. Who's your? Well, actually, first let me let me run over last week's. Uh, last week we had Cody pick Brandon Marshall, the Chicago Bears. Depending on how your league scores, he probably got you like five to eight points. Nothing big here. I, Brandon Marshall is breaking my heart. John went with Eddie Lacy of the Green Bay Packers. He bounced back to get you like 10 or 12 points last week, depending, again, on your league. Uh, and my pick was Matt Forte for the second week in a row. I feel like I kind of cheated picking him twice in a row. But Forte, I, I called Forte, I think, to get 20 points last week watching the, the show. And he got, depend, again, depending on your league, the league I have him in, he got me 20.2. So, 
damn, I'm good. No, it took you two weeks to get it right. It did, but I got it right. That's <laughs> what counts. So let's go to you first, Cody, and who's your bounce-back fantasy player of the week? Uh, I'm going to go with Nick Foles this week. Uh, he had six six of some change last week. I'm not sure exactly, depending on the league you got. Um, and that's not Nick Foles-esque. Uh, this week he's going against St. Louis, and their defense is all, all beat up. They're just a beat-up team in general. So I think uh, comes back strong, a good, a good solid 30-point game, which is pretty average for Nick Foles most of the time in fantasy. So I think St. Louis is 30. You're going 30? Yeah, I'm going with 30. It's just, I mean, he, he averages like 22, 23 a game. He throws an extra TD against St. Louis. So I just, I didn't, I didn't know if I heard you crack. That's all. I, I, can, I can hang on to 30. John, who do you have in your fantasy? Well, this is a, it's a no-brainer. They call him Megatron. There is no way that Megatron has one catch for 12 yards in back-to-back weeks, especially when he's playing some team called the Bills. No, he's going to wind it up. He goes for 50. I I think he breaks a fantasy record. (laughs) (laughs) I think you need to quit talking in our boys. Um, I I also went with Megatron. John was talking about it before the show, and I decided I didn't want to change my player. I mean, that was a guy I felt was going to – not necessarily because he's playing against the Bills. I don't want anybody to think I'm picking on the Bills here. I'm picking on the fact that Megatron scored like two points last week, and I just I don't see him having two points back to back. The Bills have an above average defense, but it's in Detroit. I like Stafford throwing the ball in the dome at home. He's comfortable. I think uh, you know teams are starting to figure out that they can't really double as much on Kelvin because last week you saw it happen, and they beat a good defense in the Jets, the second ranked defense on their own field by throwing the ball to Golden Tate and other players. So I, I, I think while in the back of your mind you want to you have this need to double team Calvin Johnson, I don't think teams are going to be able to get away with it as much anymore just because, you know, Tate's been so good. The running backs have been great catching the ball and, you know, Stafford's looking less reliant on Johnson. But anyways, so we have two Calvin Johnsons and one Nick Foles. We'll come back and touch on this next week. I am the champion this week. Come at me, bro. Let's go to our next thing. This is where we pick our matchup of the week. I'll go over this like I did last, uh, like I did in this last category last week. Um, I took the Lions at the Jets game. That actually was a very good game, and you're probably thinking to yourself right now that I won this too because I'm just the greatest. <laughs> um, but we'll go through the other ones. John Judd had the uh, Packers beating the Bears. Thought that would be his game of the week. It was kind of a blowout, but Cody takes the cake here. He picked uh, Eagles at San Francisco. He picked San Francisco to win, and his score was 18-15. to 15. So while he was a little off, like the difference between the two was, was like spot on. That's a four-point difference. The game was actually 26-21. to 21. San Fran did win, and that was a five-point dis- difference. Cody, it's, it's your time, man. Why don't you talk a little bit before we go into our picks from this week? Oh, it's just uh, there was two, two good teams going into the week. You know, it was kind of spot obvious for me. Um, this week I'm going to go in, though. With it, I think I hope I'm not stealing anybody's game here because this is pretty obvious to me. Cardinals at Denver, that's going to be a game. I think this is a time right now we see uh, if this Arizona Cardinals team, if they're real deal or not. You're going up not against the best defense, obviously. Denver's kind of lackluster on the defense, league, but you're going up against the greatest quarterback maybe of all time in the NFL. So let's see how your defense can stack up against that. Um, I had the Cardinals win this uh, 17 to 10. 10 points. 17 to 10, oh. so seven points. Okay. Ten, well, I was talking 10 points. Oh, yeah, 10 points. Perfect. All right, that's that's ballsy. John, game of the week. I'm, all, I'm also going Arizona-Denver. I, 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 I completely agree with Cody. You want to be a good team in the NFL? You beat the Denver Broncos in Denver. You beat the best quarterback possibly in history. But I don't think they do it. I think Denver pulls it out, and I think it's – I agree 10 points. I am going to say 24-10, to 10, Denver. 24-10, to 10, Denver. Okay, and uh, – since I'm not a one of those guys who just wants to ride you guys' coattails, I'm going with a different game. No, I had a different game anyways. I did, honestly. I mean, I can't even lie. I looked at the Cardinals-Broncos game because, obviously, it, it should be a good game. Um, I'm going with the Ravens at the Colts. I like that matchup. I feel like, uh, you know, Baltimore is exceeding expectations. <laughs> Steve Smith is exceeding expectations. 36. Guys, a man possessed. I almost took him out at like 11.30 in the morning on Sunday in place of Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne had a good game, though, too, but it was like a 10-point differential. Uh, Steve Smith, thanks, man, the old guy, tearing him up. He's fired up. And I think, you know, I I do think the Colts are going to win this game. 
I mean, being at home, I have it uh, Colts 31, Baltimore 23, but I, you know, I think it'll be kind of a, a back and forth. Neither of them really have a crazy defense. They both have pretty efficient offenses, but Andrew Luck's on a tear, man. This guy could be the MVP this year. He's just got to get his wins up. Um, guys, any comments on my game, I guess, since you guys yeah, took the same game? I, I, I got to say, I think uh, the – that the uh, Ravens are two one of those Jekyll and Hyde teams. Obviously, they one week they're great, next week I mean they don't have a running game right now. Everybody's out, you know that. And Andrew Luck is on. Or set baby. Yeah, that's true. Well, Bernard Pierce is out too, so yeah, whatever. Um, but Andrew Luck's on a tear right now. He got me forty five points in a non PPR league. I think I think it's a blowout. I think Colts just destroy the Ravens. I don't know score. I don't know, but I don't think it's gonna be any back and forth. And I don't know what the relevance of whether it was a PPR league for a quarterback is, but... Well, that's true. I always say uh, that. Anyway. <laughs> so well, maybe, unless look, you're Andy Dalton. And, yeah. And, uh, very true. Come on. Keep me in my toes. By the way, just so we're clear, I think the uh, Ravens win that game. Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, the Cardinals, the, the Colts don't have a defense. Yeah, they, they don't, don't need to have more defense. Uh, yeah, Andrew Luck can make a ring with a football all he wants. But I, the Cardinals are not the Cardinals, but the the Ravens have a better defense, and I I think they maybe keep up, and I think they shock them at the end. I think it's a I'm gonna say a three point game, and not a, yes. not a back and forth. I, I think I think uh, the Colts have a second half meltdown, and the the Ravens come back and steal one. And see that's good for me, and, and I expect people to differ on the subject. That's why I picked the game. I mean I I didn't think it was clear cut either way. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to urge you to. Stop on over to www. How many W's did I just put in there for? www.sports-kings.com. Check out all our work over there. You can subscribe to this YouTube page since you're here. Like our video. Comment on our video. We'll interact with you and tell your friends. Till next week, have a great viewing Sunday. We out.